Hey guys, welcome back to the Crafty Nook. Today, well, right this minute, I only have a few minutes to kind of get things going. So I thought I would do like a little bit of a, what are my plans? Because it's time to finish this October album. It is the 1st of November. It's officially my birthday month. Um, and I'm ready to get these last two, I think it might end up being three spreads knocked out. And so, um, I thought I would go ahead and turn the camera on during these few minutes that I have to, um, do some things. So the last three things I have to document is our pumpkin carving. So we carved pumpkins on Sunday, which was three days ago. It's Tuesday, Sunday, maybe two days ago, the day before Halloween, we carved pumpkins. And so I have some photos of us carving pumpkins, which my plan for these is to put this in front of this and have it flap open to show a before and after and then have this kind of at the bottom. That's my idea. Then I have, oh, and I guess I was gonna do a before and after of this, like before and after. I don't know. I don't know why I ended up with those. But whatever photo I don't use for this, if I only use one, I can use it for Project Life for this year. Then I have our Halloween candy, which this photo just brings me lots of joy. And then I have Halloween night where we sat out on our front porch and handed out candy. Um, and so my thoughts are for the pumpkin, I already told you I want to do almost like an advent tile, advent style before and after situation. And then with the Halloween candy, I still have these bags that the Halloween candy came in. And so I was thinking about cutting this guy out and turning him into a pocket where I can put these photos in the pocket along with a piece of journaling, pulled this card to journal, and then I thought I could cut these out and attach them somehow and make um, some pieces to go into the pocket as well. I could also use this as the, as the pocket, but I really like him because his mouth is clear. And so I was thinking I could do one photo on one side, the pocket on the other, and have all the candy pieces coming out, or maybe this way. I don't know, that's my thought. So, I turned the camera on, because I have about, now it's about 15 minutes, and I wanna go ahead and start cutting these out, and I didn't want to not have you guys along for that. So that's what I'm fixing to do. Um, put you on fast forward so that I can cut these candy pieces out. I also went ahead and pulled some die cuts out of this die cut pack. I was thinking these might be good for the pumpkins if there's room. This would be good for the last page with the trick or treating. And then these giant candy pieces might be good to either embellish the, the tags that I'm gonna put in the pocket or to put around the bottom of the layout. Because I do still have some, where are they? I have a few puffy stickers, um, and most of them are candy. I have one pumpkin. And then I do have these. Um, I have these stickers still. I have a pumpkin, some candies, lots of candies and another pumpkin. And then I have goodies, October 31st, All Hallows Eve. So I have several things in the word pumpkins to use to embellish with. So that's where I'm at. This will be finished today. I don't care. Oh, I forgot I had these. I might put some of these in the pocket with um, some journaling about Halloween on it. Um, so once this goes up, I'll be filming a flip through and then um, 
doing my flip, uh, flip through in my thoughts on how this process went. Um, oh, I wish I had not chomped through that. That's okay. But I think there's one on the other side. That might actually make a good little tag. Just to kind of get an idea of the candy that we bought. So, um, let me put you on fast forward so I can start cutting these out. All right, guys. So, today I started by cutting out the pieces that I wanted from these candy bags. So, I focused on the pieces that had the types of candy on them and the that little skeleton window. And I just cut them out. This bag here has like a pirate on it, so I cut him out too. And I end up using him as um, one of the back backgrounds. So I really thought that I would use him with his hands to do my spread. But it just didn't look right. I couldn't get it to look right. So I originally start by cutting him out, all hands and all. And then once I get uh, the notebook out with these photos and um, journaling card that I wanted to use, I decide that it's just not looking right with the hands, with the photo. So I end up cutting his hands off, which you'll see in a minute. <coughs> I'm so excited that I have completed an entire project start to finish in the time frame that I set and I am so proud and excited and ready to start tackling December because if I can do October then why can't I do December I have way more downtime in December because I'm a teacher so okay so I've cut his hands off and now I am gluing him down with my art glitter glue this my liquid art glitter glue it's not actually glittery that's just the brand sorry I, but I just swallowed loud so I'm just cleaning up the edges where it kind of seeped out a little and I'm just gonna set that to the side to dry and start working on some of these candy pieces so I realized that I'm gonna have to cut this little journaling card down in order for them to fit because he's not as wide as I expected him to be since I cut his hands off so I pick up this photo of candy I cut it down to the same size as that journaling card and this is where I attach it to the I attach that pirate to the back of this candy shot and just cut around and so that's going to include the candies and the pirate. And then I'm pulling out some pieces of cardstock from my stash to uh, back some of these other pieces that I cut out from the bag on. And so I cut down this one from the M&Ms and Milky Way, which FYI did not work in the paper trimmer. I had to use my scissors. And I'm just sitting here in all of this with double-sided tape. I probably could have and maybe should have used liquid glue, but I feel like it takes too long to dry and I want it to be done. So then I just attach the Twix and Snickers back to back and I'm just going to put that in the pocket by itself. For some reason, I felt like it was absolutely necessary to have all of the pieces of candy captured because we buy different candy every year. And I think it would be kind of fun to look back and see what we bought this year. So those all fit into the little skeleton faces pocket. And now I'm just trimming down this 4x6 photo of me with the cauldron of candy. Oh, that should have been what I called it. It's cauldron of candy. I missed an opportunity. It's okay. So now I'm backing my photo up with this um, paper that has little candy pieces all over it from that Halloween Town collection and just trimming it out to fit the downside with a traveler's notebook is that you only have so much space the upside is that there's only so much space so you get your, not, your project done pretty quickly if you're working on it consistently so now I'm just trying to see if I can fit these hands back on there, see if they'll look right. And I end up, you know, scrapping that idea. And so now I'm trying to cover up some of the nutrition information that was on that pocket or on that piece. And I'm using these giant, 
these die cuts that came with this collection are huge. I, who uses those? Do they look better on a 12 by 12 layout? Does, if anybody knows if they if giant die cut pieces work better when you're scrapbooking 12 by 12 size, would you please let me know? Because I've never done a 12 by 12 scrapbook layout. And I'm just wondering if that is what this pack of stuff is geared towards. So now I have added um, Jeepers Creepers to his head. It almost kind of reminds me of like a hat that he's wearing. And then just some little word strips and candy piece stickers. And I'm trying to create another cluster up in the top. Which I probably overdo it on this, but that's okay. It's Halloween. I've got all of this product that I'm really trying to use. I've never done a, an October daily before. Um, but I do think I like it. So I just trimmed the stick off of this lollipop or sucker or whatever you call it. Thinking that I could use it just by itself, but it, I just couldn't do it. So then I put the word trick or treat with a couple of puffy stickers and a die cut or maybe a cardstock sticker. And then now I'm just adding these puffy stickers everywhere. As soon as I saw the size of this piece, I knew I wanted to use that candy banner that was with the Halloween Town. Then I just used a white jelly roll to write out yum with some exclamation points and added a lollipop sticker. Uh, do y'all call them lollipops or do you call them suckers? I used to only call them suckers and then uh, someone I know call them lollipops all the time and I, it just kind of stuck with me. Um, but it does sound a little strange sometimes to say lollipop. So now I've got this uh, journaling card where I'm going to talk about how much candy we bought and how I hope it's enough. Because did I do this before or after the 31st? I can't remember. But I just embellished that with some stickers and I'm at, I just can't leave well enough alone. I added up another puffy sticker there and then took it right back off. And then in the Halloween Town cardstock stickers, there's this one that said the witching hour. So I put that on there because we gave candy out for Halloween. And then I'm going to add something to cover that up. The 410. I think in that journaling I also put that we bought over 600 pieces of candy this year. So these are all the cards. And I've got one that's blank and I'm going to try to put something on that. And I end up going with um, one of these sucker die cuts and some stickers. Some cardstock stickers. Though These sucker die cuts were surprisingly difficult to use. I would have thought they'd have been easier. But they were hard for me. I'm sorry about the crinkling. I'm at my craft desk and I keep it covered with parchment. <clears throat> so then I also added a skeleton cardstock sticker from the Halloween Town sticker sheet. And now I'm just double checking all of this and I'm gonna add it into the pocket. And they all fit nicely. And then that Twix Snickers piece is in front. So now I'm going to move on after I do a little doodly border. And for some reason I started with this one I think because I was most inspired by it. But this is the middle of the three spreads that I did. So I went ahead and flipped over to the back because I felt like that would be less time consuming. Because um, I was waiting for my child to get off the or out of school. So I didn't want to get caught up in something if I couldn't finish it. So these, this is photos from Halloween night of us handing out candy. We had quite a few trick or treaters and then about, about nine o'clock we got tired of sitting out there and we still had, you know, a couple of handfuls of candy. And so we just, the, this group of teenage boys showed up. And they were wearing backpacks turned around backwards as their trick-or-treat bags. And we just filled them up. Just three teenage boys got the last of our candy. <laughs> so 
So I am just trying to finish up this page and embellish it. I'm going to put this All Hallows Eve. And I felt like it was still too empty. So I'm sifting through here. I end up doing a couple of tombstone die cuts. Mostly because we have a little bit of a graveyard out in our front garden bed. Like flower beds. It's a graveyard right now. So I thought it was fitting. And I wanted somewhere to journal about... Um, handing out the candy because this is the first year we have ever handed out candy and not had a kid to take trick-or-treating my daughter went trick-or-treating with her friend and um tyler has the flu and he's at my grandmother's they both have the flu so I am just adding some stickers, trying to decide if I want one or two. I end up going with one and then add a pumpkin and a skull puffy sticker to this little bottom cluster and get out a white jelly roll to do my journaling. And so this page I believe is done and now I'm going to flip over to the pumpkin carving. So we did a lot of firsts this year. Um, Dakota has never carved pumpkins we have always traditionally painted our pumpkins because um i didn't know how to carve pumpkins and the kits were always really expensive and um i felt like it was really messy and time consuming so i would just throw some parchment paper down or some butcher paper and hand them some paints some of those apple barrel 99 cent paints and they always painted their pumpkins and they turned out great but dakota asked to carve pumpkins this year and with her band schedule, she's been gone every Saturday. And so we procrastinated buying pumpkins. And when we finally went to get them, there were no big pumpkins left at the store we bought from. And so we ended up having to get the small pie pumpkins. But I personally think they turned out super cute. So, like I said in the beginning, I'm trying to turn this into almost an advent style where you open the flap. Which I didn't even document my spooky advent. It was just one of those that has the words. Like, little hidden things behind the doors. Man, I can't believe I forgot that. It's okay, I ran out of room. So, I'm just adding these before photos, before we started carving. Which, surprisingly, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, we had a kit that had the um, stencils in it, but our pumpkins were too small. So, there was something weird on this pumpkin at the top. I don't know what it was. Maybe it was supposed to be, like, twisted around, and that's why it looked like that. But I just cut that piece off. And so these are all die cuts out of the die cut pack that I've had in my stash for forever, which I didn't use as many as I had wanted to. These dogs are going crazy. Somebody just dinged on. Oh, it's the mailman. Delivering my scrapbook order, scrapbook.com order. Those dogs are going crazy. Anyway, so I am just adding a puffy pumpkin sticker to all of these. Um, before photos to the flap and now I'm adding um, another cardstock sticker I did my journaling I don't know what I'm doing I'm trying to figure out where that's gonna go and then I think I do another doodly border and what else do I do I think I just kind of flip through so I'm fixing to come to the outro so, thanks for hanging with voiceover, Michelle. Okay, guys, I have finished those last three spreads in my October daily. I'm not in love with this one. But the thing that I have learned by looking back at older projects is that when I look back at them... I don't, I couldn't tell you which ones I didn't love at the time because they ended up turning out okay. And I think that's going to be the case here. It's fine. Uh, this turned out, eh, it's okay. Same with this one. And honestly, I'm just ready <laughs> to.
to move on to something else. So I'm going to figure out what to do with the back page here. I might cover it. I don't know. This little thing got kind of chunky and it, it's falling apart and that's fine. I'm going to see about rebinding it maybe. Um, but the next video that you see will be a full flip through of this project. Um, and then it's time for Christmas, uh, basically to get set up and ready to do some Christmas documenting. So thanks for hanging out in the crafty nook today. I will see you next time. Bye.